Hello. Thank you so much for worshiping with us on the Sunday morning, uh, the day before Memorial Day. We just wanted to say thank you to all those who, families who have loved ones who paid the ultimate price uh, for us to continue to, to enjoy being in America and the freedoms that we enjoy. And, and if you know someone who had a family member who uh, gave the, paid the ultimate price, uh, remember them today. Take some time tomorrow uh, to, to pray for them and that family is there remembering uh, that loved one as well. Today we've got a great service for you. Uh, we've got a message from Brother Matt, a message from Ms. Michelle, uh, Kathy's going to be playing some music for you, and now we have a, um, a, a tribute and a, a, a moment to remember those who gave their life. just wanted to take a chance and say thank you, a huge thank you, to those of you who already give to First United Methodist Wetumpka. Needs are being recognized both in our church and community and are being met by your continued generosity. You can give generously by mail, text, or even using our website. If you haven't tried giving online yet, now's a great time to start. You can click the link in the description or visit wetumpkafirst.com slash give. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in with us this morning and worshiping with us. And today we're talking about role models. Now I'm gonna start off explaining uh, to you guys what a role model is for those of you that don't know. A role model is simply someone that you look up to, maybe someone that you wanna shoot to be like. Um, for some people, it might be a famous soccer player that's really good that you just think, oh my goodness, he is so good or she is so good at soccer, I wanna be just like him or her. Or maybe it's a famous movie star that has all this money and 
and um, she's so pretty and you want to look just like her when you grow up. Who knows what it is? But what I want to talk to you about is how important it is to pick a really good role model. Think about it for a second. If we pick it off of just who's rich and famous or just who is a good soccer player or something along those lines, we're going to be very disappointed because life is so much more than just those few things right there. And the best role model that I can think of is Jesus. He's right there to read all about and find just what type of role model and person that he is. All that's written in the Bible for us to read about and find more about um, how he treated people and what kind of person he was for us and still is today for us. Um, so when you read about Jesus in the Bible, think about it. Um, you learn that he's loving, he's caring, he's kind, he's tender-hearted, he's gen uh, gentle. Um, my goodness, the list could go on and on. He's forgiving, he's patient, and so on. You can read so many good qualities about Jesus and um, why we all, myself included, need to really shoot to be like him more and more each and every day. Are we going to be perfect like Jesus? No, because we're human and Jesus is God's perfect son. So only Jesus is perfect, but it gives us something to shoot for each and every day. Um, Ephesians 5 uh, verse 1 tells us to be imitators of God in everything we do. Paul writes that for us. Look it up, Ephesians 5 1. And so let's imitate, let's be like God in everything that we can do, okay? And that's what I want you guys to work on. And let's bow our heads and say a quick prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for everyone tuning in today, the adults and the kids, every single person, and we thank you for them. We pray that you'll pour your blessings and protection upon them. We pray, dear Lord, that all of us remember to shoot to be like you each and every single day. You're so wonderful and you're so good to us, and we, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray, and we all say amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love you guys, and I miss you guys. Have a good weekend. Good Sunday morning, church. Brother Matt here again. Uh, we just have a few prayer concerns that we'd like to go over before uh, we get started with our worship service today. Uh, we want to continue praying for Mayor Willis and Bishop Graves and all of our leaders uh, that are in these positions where they are having to uh, make difficult uh, decisions. Uh, these are not easy times for our leaders, and they need our support. They need our prayers, so we need to continue praying for them. Uh, we also need to continue praying for all the first responders and the health care workers and all those who um, are going back to work now, um, and all of us who will be uh, moving in and around um, our city, and uh, hopefully soon our church buildings. Um, and then uh, we want to continue praying for Dane Mann. He had emergency surgery this last week. Uh, I understand he's doing uh, a lot better. Uh, very successful surgery. Uh, also, um, um, my cousin Cheryl Cummings uh, has been diagnosed with cancer, so we want to uh, pray for her today as well. And then uh, Dan Lockwood's mother, Clara, um, uh, they've called in hospice for her, hospice care. So we want to pray for uh, Dan and his family, especially his mother, Clara. And Albert Hunt continues to rehab uh, in the, the rehab facility he's been placed in. And we want to continue praying for Brent Wallace and uh, Sanford uh, Brandon uh, as they continue their um, cancer treatment. So we have a lot of unspoken prayer requests uh, that we just need to uh, put before the Lord. Also, I want you to join me in praying for the friends and families of the brave men and women who paid the highest price, uh, those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation's freedom. Uh, we honor them on Memorial Day. Uh, Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to come together uh, and worship you in spirit and in truth. And we pray that you will bless each and every person uh, that is tuning in this morning. Uh, bless them and the families they represent. 
Uh, we lift up these prayer concerns to you, Lord. Your word reminds us that we can come boldly before your throne of grace and that you hear and you answer all of our prayers. And we thank you, Lord, for listening to us. And, uh, Lord, we know that you are concerned uh, about every detail of our life. There is nothing that escapes you. Our life is an open book before you. And so, Lord, we just thank you for loving us and um, answering these prayers. Give us the grace to receive your answers uh, to these prayers. Uh, Lord, we also um, just thank you for this opportunity this weekend to uh, remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy. Uh, and so, Lord, we pray for their families and their loved ones this weekend as they remember uh, those who have fallen. Uh, Lord, we also want to thank you for um, our leaders, uh, Mayor Willis and uh, Bishop Graves, especially. Uh, Lord, we, we know that uh, we miss being with each other, and we miss the fellowship. We miss, we miss worshiping together. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray that um, you'll help us to make the right decisions so that we can come back uh, and, and, and uh, worship together soon and very soon. Uh, and uh, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now, our um, scripture text for today is uh, from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Uh, William Howard Taft was a truly unique uh, American figure in the history of our nation, uh, he led two branches of government and was the youngest uh, solicitor general in American history. Uh, Taft was born on September 15, uh, 1857 in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he seemed headed toward a distinguished legal career before his ambitions uh, shifted to politics. Taft succeeded uh, Theodore Roosevelt in 1909 as the 27th president only to lose a bitter re-election bid in 1912 to Woodrow Wilson. But his career goal was to be a Supreme Court Justice. After uh, leaving the White House, Taft became Dean of Yale Law School, and he was named by President Warren G. Hardin to the Supreme Court in 1921. He was Chief Justice until he retired shortly before his death at age 72 in 1930. After joining the court, Taft reportedly wrote that, I don't remember that I ever was president. William Howard Taft was fully devoted to becoming a Supreme Court justice, and he accomplished that goal, and then some, when he became Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. It is not uncommon for people to get sidetracked uh, in their career goals, but it is unusual for that deviation to take you through the White House. When we are fully devoted to God, there is no telling where that road can take us. So what does it mean to be fully devoted to God? Uh, 24 years ago this September, my cousin D. Williams died in the old Collager Bridge accident, and it changed my life forever. You've heard my, my testimony. At his memorial service, I made a commitment to the Lord to follow him and to serve him uh, with all that I was for the rest of my life. And at that moment in my life, I was working uh, for the Department of the Air Force at Gunner Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, someone asked me the other day how I became a preacher. Uh, it started the day I began following and serving God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. It was a daily process, one step at a time, one day at a time, trying to always move in concert uh, with the Lord. But God didn't ask me to become a preacher uh, on, on day one, not at all. He just wanted me to be fully devoted to him every day of my life and to follow him wherever he led me. In a survey of unchurched people who are seeking the Lord, 
most of them said they are looking for this kind of church. A church that accepts you, no matter where you come from, or what you wear, or what you look like. A church that is active in helping hurting people in their community. A church where people care deeply about each other and support each other. A church that believes God's love is available to all persons. You know, when I read that, I realized that people are looking for a church just like ours. A church filled with people that are fully devoted to God. They are looking for a church where people are following and serving God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Presenting yourself to God as alive from the dead, to use Paul's words, implies a, a recognition that from this moment on, you are altogether his. This giving of oneself is a, a definite act, just as definite as believing in Jesus Christ. There must be a day in your life when you place your life into God's hands, and from that day forward, you belong to him, and you are no longer your own. God wants us to be fully devoted to him and to his will for our lives and do whatever he requires. It is a complete and daily surrender. Service to God then becomes one's lifelong mission. I'm not saying that we should not be faithful and committed to our career. That's not what I mean. We still need to be faithful and serious in our vocation because God has put us there for a reason. Uh, that's our that's our field. That's where we've been planted so that we can be God's witnesses in this world. But we must see that our entire life is directed toward our service to God. We do everything for the purpose of obeying God's will and pleasing him. That's the reality of devotion. Devotion to God means serving others. When you are devoted to God as a Christian, you want to tell others about Jesus because he is the cornerstone of your every heartbeat and breath. You follow Jesus' lead and serve others. But only those who belong to the Lord can devote themselves to the Lord. Devotions mean that, devotion means that we can say, Lord, you have given me the opportunity and the privilege to come before you and to serve you. I think Paul said it best. I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, this is what happened to the church in Jerusalem. They were fully devoted to God and service to others. That early church had at least four characteristics that they displayed. And I believe uh, those characteristics need to be displayed in the church today. The first is this. It was a learning church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They never stopped learning. Don't ever stop learning. The day you stop learning is the day you stop growing spiritually. We are on a continuous path to higher learning. Need I remind you that God's ways and God's thoughts are much higher than ours? Guess what? We're not there yet. We need to continue learning each and every day. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of all truth. And yes, the Holy Spirit can give you words that you do not possess when you are about to witness to the greatness of God. But God wants us to continue learning all of our life. We need to keep digging. When they discovered the largest gold ore deposit in history, it was only three feet below where the last crew had stopped digging. They were sitting on a gold mine, and they just gave up. My mom and dad are now 88. Mom will be 88, uh, actually, on, on June the 4th. Uh, and they're still digging. And they're mining those golden nuggets of God's holy word every day. Listen to the psalmist. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still, still bear fruit in old age. We need to keep digging. Amen. It was also a loving church. How do we become a loving church? It begins with fellowship. The most important fellowship that we will ever have is our fellowship with God. 
And the type of fellowship we have on the inside with God determines the type of fellowship we have on the outside with others. If we love God, we'll love others. If we're at peace with God, we'll be at peace with others. If we have experienced mercy from God, we will be merciful to others. And if we have experienced God's generosity, we will be generous with others. The first Christians shared their possessions with one another. All believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Does this mean every spirit-filled believer will follow their example literally? No, but at different times, different people might be called on by God to give. Listen to how John put it in his first letter. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity for them, how can the love of God be in that person? In 1997, Tammy and I and our son Garrett went on a mission trip to Costa Rica with Mulder United Methodist Church. The day before we were supposed to turn our money in uh, for the trip, I had to sell my Bronco uh, so that we would have enough money for the tickets, but no extra money. But a couple in our church gave a large donation and we were given our money back a couple of weeks later. Because of their generosity, we had all the money we needed to go on the trip. You see, God doesn't tell everyone to give like that. But to those he tells, they need to obey. It was also a worshiping church. This took place in the temple courts and in their homes. And certainly it is healthy when the more formal and dignified services of the church are complemented with the informality and exuberance of home meetings. The church needs both. The second thing we see is that it was both joyful and reverent. There could be no doubt of their joy because the Bible describes them as having glad and sincere hearts. Every worship service should be a joyful celebration of the mighty acts of God through Jesus Christ. Public service should be dignified, but it should never be dull and boring. And if you ever come to First United Methodist Church or Wetumpka and you're bored or it's dull, let me know. You see, God had visited Jerusalem. He had visited their city. And everyone was filled with awe, which seems to include the Christians as well as the non-Christians. He was in their midst, and they knew it. They bowed down before him in humility and wonder. The combination of joy and reverence is a healthy balance in worship. It was also an evangelistic church. Praise and proclamation were both a natural outflow of hearts full of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. They praise the Lord and they proclaim the gospel and the Spirit drove the church to witness. Not only did they worship daily, they witnessed daily. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. God grew the church and God is still growing the church. Listen to what Paul says. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither uh, the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters has one purpose, and, and they will be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. But God did not add them to the church without saving them. Salvation and church membership went together then, and they still go together today. The only commitments that we can be responsible for are our own. When I finally made that commitment to become a pastor, I sensed the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I knew that I had made a commitment to God and to his church to preach the word, to faithfully administer the sacraments, and to maintain the unity of the Spirit, and to engage in service to others. And by the grace of God, I will continue to uphold those commitments. But no one can make me do that. And I can't make anyone else uphold their commitments. When it comes to commitment, you're either in or you're out. There is no such thing as a life in between. The people were devoted to the apostles' teaching. 
They were devoted to each other in love. They were devoted to God in worship. And the people were devoted to the world in outreach. They were fully devoted. Maybe today you are ready to be fully devoted to God. Amen? I hope that you've enjoyed our time together. Uh, it blesses me so much to be able to do this. Uh, it, even in these difficult times, um, God has been blessing me uh, as I study his word and, and as God, um, you know, just helps me to, to understand uh, more clearly what we're going through. Uh, and I pray that you will continue praying for me and our leaders of our church as we make some difficult decisions over the next couple of days. Um, as always, uh, be safe, be healthy, and stay in Christ's arms. Y'all have a blessed day. I hope you enjoy your Memorial Day tomorrow. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.